Welcome to Weld.com. We get asked a lot to do aluminum demonstrations. Uh, we weld a lot of aluminum in here in our program, TIG welding, MIG welding. Um, I've set up a, a weld here, it's a, it's a lap weld, and I have cleaned the material with a hand stainless brush, which is my preferred method of cleaning aluminum. And I, I wanna do this, this lap weld on here. I, got, I, have, I have a little bit of a problem here. I've got a small wire. Uh, I did a test weld a second ago, and I'm maxed out on my wire feed speed. I'm running pure argon, about 30 cubic feet per hour. I have about 22 and a half volts. This is quarter inch material, so I may not be able to fill this weld all the way up, and that's fine. I could still make a good fillet weld in here. Now on the back side presents a little bit of a problem here in that we have a plasma cut surface, okay? And I didn't clean it, and I didn't clean it purposely to kind of show you what, what can happen with aluminum uh, and I didn't clean this surface very much at all. You can see the oxide layer. You can see where I've buffed that off. Aluminum is, is kind of funny in that it melts about 1100 degrees, but the oxide layer melts at 3700 degrees. That's why it presents a, a, a little bit of a problem in welding some of the mechanical properties. It also dissipates heat four times faster than carbon steel. So, you know, by recognizing some of these uh, mechanical features and properties of this metal, we can overcome that and weld it. But I wanted to purposely leave this unclean to see if it reacts or makes a bad weld. Um, it, it may or may not, I, I don't know. Normally I'm cleaning all of my uh, plasma cut edges. I'll sand them back with a, uh, a sanding disc or a flapper disc that's been used on stainless only. So. I'm going to get some uh, my gear on here and I'm going to I'm going to make this weld across here in this lap weld. Be right back. Okay, we're back. I want to make this lap weld here and there's two things about aluminum when I'm when I'm running a spool gun or any wire feed process with aluminum. I like to push aluminum. Don't like to drag it. Drag it in my experience and and we've cut and etched some samples uh, lends itself to porosity. A lot of soot uh, it stays a lot cleaner if we put uh, 10, 15 degrees push angle on it. Another thing that I like to do with wire feeds, uh, rather straight MIG or with a spool gun is this wire is real soft. Uh, some of you may have experienced a term called bird nesting, backlash. I like to take this aluminum wire and kind of bend it up in a little U here. When it hits, it, 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 it will ground but it's not enough to send the shock wave back. And I've even had bird nests in spool guns before. So I like to do this as kind of a habit thing for me. Uh, again, it's, it's more of a personal preference. I just personally don't like fixing backlash bird nest messes inside these guns. Okay, so let's make this weld. Well, when I started out, it took a second for the weld pool to kind of jump across here. I a little bit of a wandering arc as I, I went across here. Again, I, I'm, I'm too small in my wire. I'm, I'm running what's available to me here. I'm 030 on my wire size. I'm 22 and a half volts, and my wire feed speed is maxed out at 475. That's why we got a little bit of a long arc to start with, and uh, it took a second for the weld pool to jump across. I could have done a little better in my travel speed, Again, we have an acceptable fillet weld here. Uh, it's not the prettiest. Um, we're going to turn this over and, and, and do the backside here that hasn't been cleaned. And maybe we'll see a noticeable difference. I'm going to make this weld on the backside. This is the unclean side. 
However, one thing that came to mind is now I'm superheated on this part. I went ahead and dropped this down a half of a volt, see if it makes a little bit of a difference. I'm noticing some black soot. I also notice a little wire kind of moving around. It's like it's uh, like it's not coming out of the gun straight all the time. Yeah, that's pretty normal in my experience for spool guns. This wire has a lot of cast when it's coming off here and going through the drive rolls. Comes out of the contact tip kind of squirreling around. It's completely normal. This actually didn't weld that bad. The very start of it was real good profile. Um, I got kind of hung up over here with my sleeve. But again, uh, you know, we've made a decent fillet weld. Not the, not the prettiest by any means, but highly acceptable for putting aluminum together. I've gone ahead and cleaned this uh, weld up. We had a little bit of, had a little bit of soot, uh, and that's very normal on aluminum. A uh, little bit of soot and I just hand brushed it. Okay, so stainless steel wire brush. I just kind of clean this off a little bit. I'm looking at the profile. Uh, I can tell that when I started I was way colder. Um, and that's, you know, that's fine. It took a second for it to get across and jump this uh, whole area across this plate. And then as we were going down through here, I'm noticing that the pool flattened out and our profile was a little better. Again, it's a little, it's a little rough. I mean, it's the first time I've run this particular spool gun. Uh, I'd probably need to get used to it w with the wire, the way it's coming out of there. And maybe even I'd, I'd like to try the, the larger size wire, a higher voltage and less wire speed uh, to maybe control some of these factors as far as how the weld laid in. And then we got to the other side that wasn't even cleaned. One of the surfaces wasn't even cleaned. Um, again, uh, I cleaned it off and, and it, you know, surprisingly it welded okay. Again, it was preheated from welding on the backside. Um, you know, if I was doing a, a, a structural project, uh, even though this isn't the prettiest weld, I, it's okay. It'll work, you know. So, a little practice, uh, which is what we all need, a little practice. We can make these welds look super smooth and uh, a little more acceptable. Uh, maybe learn a few adjustments on the machine. Could be an inductance, could be a wire feed speed or a, a voltage adjustment. So I hope this was beneficial. Uh, please uh, subscribe to the videos. We'll, we'll try to put out new videos every Monday. I'm Bob Moffat with Weld.com.